So we are going to talk about uh, basically bronchial asthma, its miasmatic understanding, its perceptions and how to perceive a case in practice, very simple. So what is the asthma? It is predominantly affecting the flow of air into the pulmonary airways for a short period of time. It is a chronic respiratory disorder having acute exacerbations. Now, what do you mean by acute exacerbation? Suppose if we plot the disease in relation to time and the intensity, there will be time where it will be just very close to normal, you will find a sudden episode which will come treated or untreated. It may have a remission and again there will be some space in relation to time where you will not find any symptom and again it will come up. These are the normal patterns, but when it becomes chronic what you see is that there will be some time, you know it will take longer time and then there will be some smaller spikes or a bigger spikes. A time will come where there will be some residual disease remains for a long time. Now this will allow us to understand the chronicity of the disease. These are acute exacerbations. Now, this is very important to understand what is the totality at this point? What is the acute totality? If we are able to understand what is the acute totality at this phase, we may be able to find an acute medicine which will affect, which will work in that acute phase. Like there are certain diseases. If you do not find the right correct medicine at that phase, you cannot relieve. Like asthma, even in epilepsy, Kent has said it beautifully that unless you have a clear, clear cut acute medicine, you may not be able to relieve the disease completely. After some time, it will come back again. Whenever there is an acute exacerbation, there is a peculiar symptom may come up and if as a physician, if you are able to observe this very peculiar symptom, you will be able to find the remedy very fast and that phase, if treated in a right way, it will just disappear and you will find that the patient will keep on improving. Okay? So, what you need is to find the right medicine to cover that totality and they are totally different from the routine symptoms. The routine symptoms are simple clear cut constitutional symptoms and they re represent the fixed general totality. So, there is a fixed general totality and there is an acute totality. The preliminary symptoms are bouts of breathlessness which are relatively painless, feeling of tightness in the chest. Marked anxiety and restlessness with loss of sleep or cough with or without expectoration depending upon inflammation or infections. In bronchial asthma, the problem is more when breathing out. Normally about 70-80 percent of the inhaled air is breathed out. But in these circumstances, it is much less depending upon the intensity and lot of stale air remains trapped at the bottom of lungs. Now, the intensity varies from each person to person such as mild and infrequent episodes to the frequent serious episode. So, it could be just mild and they, they are easily handleable. You may give some medicine, it may disappear or it could be frequent serious episodes depending upon the intensity, depending upon the kind of asthma and the duration of the disease. In mild to moderate cases, there is a short incidence of breathlessness along with wheezing. 
while in severe cases the airway is totally narrowed and it is clogged. Now what happens in bronchial asthma patients? What causes obstruction? The first thing which happens is the spasm. There is a spasm of bronchi. Second is secretion of mucus which obstructs the bronchi or bronchioles. And third thing is the inner lining gets edematous and affects. So it's more of a spasm. So when spasm happens, you know, there is a major problem. It is associated with mucus secretions which clogs the space. And third thing which happens is the edematous condition or the swelling of the inner lining. The mucus lining gets edematous. So, these are three predominant things which happens in bronchial asthma. Now, why are we understanding this? Because based on this, our management changes. Right remedy has been always a problem in homeopathy. We feel that a particular remedy is right, it does not work. And even if we find the right remedy, it is very difficult to manage the patients after that. Now, before we go into the details, we will try to classify asthma into different categories. The first characteristic is intrinsic, the second is extrinsic, third is occupational, fourth is exercise induced asthma. Now, intrinsic, intrinsic is predominantly psychological in nature, it is because of mental tensions, worries or emotional disturbances, internal problems and conflicts. So, the expressions are very clear and if you study these cases, you will be able to find out there is an emotional conflict which is going on within the patient which is unresolved, a very clear unresolved emotional conflict. The second type is extrinsic, very easy to identify. There is external reason, predominantly an allergy. So, normally if you avoid such substances, it is very easy to manage it. Okay? So, one of the most important thing is allergy to food. Because there are only few ways in which you come in contact with external substance. One is inhalation, second is ingestion and the third is contact. Okay? So, nothing can happen unless the substance you come in touch with it. So, if we are very careful and we have treated more than 10,000 cases of bronchial asthma, so we know we are able to identify what has caused this. It could be pollen, grass or flower and this is predominantly seen in children. You know, if you say that the mother will come and tell you, as soon as we go to garden, my child develops asthma by evening you know that there is an allergy to some kind of grass or flower or pollen. It could be fumes or smoke. If the person is exposed to some kind of fumes or smoke, it could trigger, it could be animal dander, it could be drug. Certain drugs like aspirin is known to cause a asthmatic response. Next variety is occupational asthma. Now, we have treated many many patients they would say as soon as I go to work I feel that I get the attack and this happens used to happen very strongly in minors nowadays they take a lot of precautions like suppose if you are working in coal mine or asbestos mine or some places you are bound to get some kind of a problem but now they are taking a lot of precautions so this is decreasing and as soon as they go away from the environment, the patient feels absolutely all right. Another condition which is very important like you know glass wool which was being used in refrigerators and insulation where you know they want to avoid the heat loss or the exchange of um, you know heat or cooling. So, it used to be 